What's up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the Project Blaze version 1.1 official build based on Android 12 L of course and this is the 20th May 2022 build. There are two separate versions for this ROM, one includes the GApps and one does not and as usual I have flashed the GApps included variant. If you don't know how to flash a custom ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro, you can check out the description or the cards. Right now, let me begin this video and of course you will find all the important links in the description box, so do not worry. Right now, let me show you the home screen. This is how it looks like. It has the pixel launcher by default to the left of the home screen. We get the Google's Discover page. Swiping down and you are in the home screen gets you the quick setting panel. Now here the quick setting panel is interesting. I'll show you in detail. But here, if you're looking at the first glance, if you're noticing this actually looks like the Android 11 kind of quick setting panel. But yeah, here is how it looks. And if you swipe up from the like bottom on the home screen, you will get the app drawer of course and you can search for any particular app that you are willing to see. And of course, the apps appear super fine, no issues whatsoever with the searching and stuff. And the widgets in the home screen are working fine, the Android 12 kind of animation, the Android 12 L kind of animation rather are working perfectly fine here if you are noticing. And of course, I have added the subscriber account widget that is actually working fine too. And the overall UI is buttery smooth, no issues whatsoever that I have faced on this particular ROM. In the about phone section, this is how it looks like. It looks different from the other ROMs and it has this logo of the project Blaze. And here we got the Android version. If you tap on that, we get this kind of about phone and the Android version is Android 12 L. And interestingly, if you make this clock to 12 o'clock, and if you're noticing, this is actually showing as Android 12 L. So in other ROMs, I have seen this part still shows as Android 12. But here, this is interesting that you can actually see Android 12 L on this Easter egg. So that's just awesome. And the Project World Blaze version is version 1.1, of course. You get the device maintainer's name over here. And the security patch is latest of May 5th, 2022, as this is a May build. And we have the Soviet star kernel as the default or stock kernel here. The SNX status shows as enforcing. In the system panel, this is how it looks like. We got the developer option and stuff. And we have a system updater from here. You can check for updates if there is a new one. But yes, this is the latest update as of right now. And we have the gestures here. We have the quickly open camera and stuff inside it. Then inside system navigation gestures, you get the settings of it. We get the swipe to invoke assistant. And as I have turned it on, it is working perfectly fine. If you're noticing, you get the pill length customization. And yes, I have increased it to the most. And as you can see, the pill bar is kind of long right now, but there is no thickness customization for this. And we have the full screen gestures and we get the IME buttons over here. The IME button space, I mean. And let me go back. We only get the three button navigation here. There is no two button navigation if you're looking to see that. Let me go back. We have the one handed mode and this actually should be working perfectly fine. If you're noticing, let me go back. We have the swipe or screenshot. I have enabled that. And with that, let me actually take a screenshot. If you're noticing, we get the share, edit, delete and the Google lens option. So everything should be working fine here. And we have the playback control and stuff. Then the double tap option is there and the prevent ringing option is there. That's it inside the gestures and we have the live translate feature if you are willing to use that. And in the pop-up camera settings, we get the camera LED, then we have the front camera raise dialog and the pop-up camera sound effects, they are working fine. And there is a camera calibration option too. So if you want to calibrate your front camera motor, you can definitely do that. And of course, in the GF's included variant, we get the Gboard as the default keyboard here. And this is how the settings panel actually looks like. Now, let me talk about some things like the camera and stuff. Yes, you get the basic kind of camera over here as default camera. This is a very old kind of Google camera. It is a really basic camera. So that's why I have installed this Gcam Unix version separately. And this is actually working perfectly fine with the ultra wide angle lens and stuff. They should be working great. If you're noticing the 1X or the main sensor is working great too. Also the 2X telephoto lens should be working fine too here. So yes, no issues with the cameras and even the front camera and stuff if I am switching to it. As you can see, it's working perfectly fine here and I can take portrait photos and stuff. This should be working great here. No issues whatsoever with the camera if you are using a separate camera app over here. And the night sight mode and stuff is working great too. Even with the front camera or the rear camera, it should be working great. Of course, you can shoot 1080p 60fps videos too over here. No issues whatsoever with that. And if you want to force 4K, of course, you will be limited to 30 FPS, I guess. So right now, it's time that we talk about the quick setting panel over here. So if you swipe down, this is how it looks like now. From all the Android 12 L ROMs, I mean other ROMs, 
that is the difference over here on this project place it actually looks like android 11 and here the toggles if you're noticing are circular and yes i have changed the style of it from here let me actually show you if you go into the wallpapers and styles and then from here we have the themed icons and the dark theme and stuff and the app grid options so we get up to five by five and we have the change wallpaper options i have been using a wallpi apps wallpaper over here so yeah that's working fine for me and you can change the accent colors from here but yes the icons you can actually change from the customization section which i'll show you later on but yes for me it looks like this the bluetooth icons and stuff if you're noticing it looks like this because i have changed all those right now let me show you in detail on top we get the brightness slider panel and of course you can adjust the brightness of the screen with that you got the auto brightness toggle too over here and the wi-fi icons and stuff if you tap and hold on it this is how the animation will look like and yes they are working fine and the bluetooth battery status and stuff you can actually see over here and even in the status bar the bluetooth battery icon appears if you have of course connected to a bluetooth device vault e-calling should be working fine here too but let me tell you there is no headset icon if you plug in a wired headset so that's how it is i couldn't enable it from the settings there is no system ui tuner kind of icon enabling option we get the flashlight then the dark theme the auto rotate and of course the mobile data and stuff is there the night light is there and we have the airplane mode the nearby shared the screen recording option is there and if you're noticing the animations everything is of android 12 l over here it looks beautiful and we get the power menu as well you can have the advanced reboot and stuff from here and the heads up you can disable then if i slide to the right we have the battery saver the do not disturb and the data saver device or home controls then the extra dim the sound toggle and if you tap and hold on the sound toggle this is how the volume panel will appear and there is a reboot toggle too so you can really reboot to the recovery or fastboot you have to tap and hold on it and the moto audio is there there is no me audio direct in this ROM. But let me actually show you, this is the Moto or Dolby Audio which is present and you can actually customize this however you like it. But yes, the sound quality overall is really really loud over here even with the wired headset or even Bluetooth headsets and even speaker as well. And the DC dimming option is here, so that's great. Also we get the high brightness mode, this is for the outdoor brightness. So yes, that is actually working perfectly fine, the display goes really really bright with this particular mode. Let me talk about the battery settings here. And here inside the battery this is how the settings looks like and yes it's not much but this is how it is we have the battery temperature on the bottom but we do not get to see the charging cycle and stuff which we get to see in evolution x roms so yeah that's how it is the battery settings is not that much fancy but yes talking about the battery life let me actually show you i have got about five to six hours of screen on time i would say so that's not huge but yes it's decent the device is really old i have been using the original battery over here my battery health actually shows as 77 percent if you're noticing the battery life actually will not be too great if you have not replaced the battery but yes five to six hours of screen on time after i have used the device for almost three years is decent i would say now let me show you the customization section which is present inside this blaze house once you go into it this is how the customization panel looks like of course you it might be looking familiar to you if you have used custom roms here we have the themes but you just slide like this to get into different customization panel so first of all we have the headline and body fonts and these are the fonts you can actually choose from we get a lot of options and we also have the big noodle titling and stuff the icon pack i have actually changed to akiras and you can see other icon packs over here you can go with the oxygen OS one and the rounded one and stuff but yes you get to see all the icon packs that how it will look once you apply them so that's great and we have the signal icons and stuff then we also get the wi-fi icon style you can actually choose from it and we also have the icon packs over here and of course you can see which icon shape will look like what so that's awesome let me move to the next one which is the status bar and here inside traffic indicators you can actually emulate it and customize it and the clock and date customization is also there and of course you can have the center clock if you like it that way and you can customize the date and stuff if you want to let me go back we have the battery styles and in here we got the landscape right or left option also we have the portrait circle dotted circle full circle etc options and here we also have the battery percentage of course inside or next to the icon you can choose and here we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar that works fine and we have the show 4g instead of LTE, the vault e vo fa icons and the camera mic access indicator option is there location indicator is there and if you swipe to the right we have the quick setting panel customization 
Now the brightness slider you can have it on true always and you can also change the position to the bottom and once you do that this is how it will look right now as you can see the brightness slider has moved to the bottom. Quick setting panel transparency option is there but you have to restart your system UI if you want to actually enable that and the clear all button you can enable that from here and of course you can change the button style if you like it that way. I don't know why I went back but yeah let's move to the next one and here inside lock screen we have the double tap to sleep the lock screen charging info the ripple effect also appears and here is how you can actually customize the figment scanner and of course we have the icon pickers and plethora of icons if you're noticing are there and of course you can choose from these and here you have the udfps animations and there are a plethora of udfps animations that you can choose from again and of course you can go with the mclaren one and stuff i'll show you the figment scanner speed and stuff later on but here you can actually customize it let me go back we also have the screen of fod again and the media art blur level you can actually customize let's move to the next one we have the in call vibration options and the long press power button toggle torch option is there and here if you scroll down we have the ignore windows secure flags and stuff and the toast app icons that's it of course we have the volume rocker wake right here so that's all the customizations which are present inside blaze house right now let's move to the display settings and we have the brightness level on top the auto brightness or adaptive brightness is there and we get the lock screen customization and in here we have the always show time and info and stuff let me go back the pitch black theme option is there if you're using dark theme and let me actually enable the dark theme so that i can show you in the dark theme this is how it looks it looks beautiful i would say and the amulet kind of black is working perfectly great for this display no issues whatsoever with the dark theme that i have faced the night light option is there and the colors you can actually change it the rgb control is there and we have the double tap to wake and the pocket detection options are there and here we have the ambient display customization you can actually enable each of them like the pickup and the hand wave gesture the pocket detection etc and we have the custom kind of settings from where you can actually enable the de-streaming and the high brightness mode both of the toggles are there in the quick setting panel in the sound settings this is how it looks like we have the media call ring etc volume controls here we have the touch vibration touch sound charging sound and vibration etc if you scroll down more we got the per app volume control so that's great and we have the screenshot sound disabling option also there is the clear speaker option so of course you can use that if your speakers are like sounding dusty or something but yeah there is no me audio direct because there is the moto or dolby audio let me go back we have the security settings right here and if you scroll down more inside settings we get the quick unlock if you want to use that we have the face unlock and the fingerprint both option and of course i have added the face and i have added two fingerprints but inside face unlock we don't have that like lock screen swiping up and stuff options but that is not there because it is there by default i would say so let me actually show you what do i mean so first let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed but let me actually enable the always on display so that i can show you but the always on display toggle is not there so from the settings let's go into the display settings we'll go into this lock screen and enable this always show time and info right now i hope the always on display turns on and as you can see let's try one more time let's just double tap to sleep over here and as you can see right now the always on display works and if i tap the premium scanner as you can see it unlocks let me try a couple more times from the always on display so that i can show you the premium scanner speed and yes it's blazing fast no issues whatsoever that i have faced i would say let me try a couple more times and here as you can see the animations and stuff works fine the double tap to wake is working fine too if i tap the pyramid scanner it unlocks perfectly fine here let me try from the lock screen again and as you can see it unlocks perfectly fine no issues whatsoever now if you're noticing on the always on display if i double tap it does not use the face unlock right away so actually to use the face unlock you have to swipe up on the lock screen and if i swipe up the front camera pops out and it unlocks so yeah it unlocks beautifully i would say let me try one more time so yes the face unlock is working perfectly fine but yes you have to swipe up over here to actually use the face unlock now there is also app lock too and i have actually enabled the app lock and you can actually go into the projected apps and search for any particular app that you want to unlock let me actually search for photos and as you can see google photos is there too and right now if i try to open the google photos and stuff let me actually find it as you can see it shows this touch frame bit scanner option so yeah the app lock is working perfectly fine and this is how you can actually unlock the particular app once you tap the frame bit scanner as you can see that particular app unlocks and you just go wherever you left it and this is how the recent panel looks like by the way you can actually go into the split top mode and stuff from right here 
and it should work supposedly fine and this is how it works and of course you can just tap here to actually switch the apps we can scale them just like this so yeah and you can just go home and once you go into the recent panel both of the apps stay together so yes the split top mode is working perfectly fine here this is the android 12 well feature and it works great and talking about the basic things the safety net and stuff passes right out of the box over here so you can use banking apps without any worries and banking apps will not be an issue for this particular ROM right out of the box. The DRM info, let's talk about that. Of course, it stays L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. It should not be a problem. Now, talking about overall performance, I would say the whole UI stays really, really smooth. I haven't had any kind of issues whatsoever, and the whole UI stays really smooth, and I haven't noticed any kind of huge lags or stutters at all. The scrolling and stuff is really smooth. I haven't faced any issues. Now let me talk about the benchmarks, here are the Android and Geekbench score with the CPU stress test on this particular build. So you might be asking, who is this ROM actually for? Well, I feel this is a pixel experience plus kind of experience. So yes, you are getting all the flavors of Android 12 and you are also getting the flavor of Android 11 as well in the quick setting panel over here. So if you are someone who is into that, you can definitely go for this ROM. The battery life is decent, the whole UI stays really smooth and everywhere I don't see any kind of huge problems at all. Huge thanks for watching this video guys, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, share this video with your friends if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet, this is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.